For anyone who hasn't seen Scavenger Rain, it's 12 30-minute episodes on Max, the highest rated show according to IMDb that we've reviewed all year out of 134 series, 7th if you judge by Metacritic, 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, 96% audience score. Neil deGrasse Tyson gave it two thumbs up, called it the best show of 2023 outside of The Golden Bachelor, of course. If you like nature documentaries, if you like Mobius-style artwork, space horror, survival stories, telekinetic, two-ton koalas, this is a must-see. I felt like Stefan just there while I was saying that. The tagline <laughs> is, don't go alone. The setup is when the crew of Demeter 227, a damaged deep space freighter, are stranded on a beautiful but dangerous alien planet called Vesta. The survivors must make their way back to their ship before the planet's native creatures kill them or worse. They are separated in three groups. You have Ozzy and her robot companion, Levi, Sam and Ursula, and Cayman. Later on, they're joined by another group of survivors, or actually scavengers, named Chris, Barry, and Terrence. And having just finished this a few minutes ago, the finale, what are your unfiltered thoughts and feelings on what you just watched? I think that this is nothing short of what you called Succession Season 4, which is a masterpiece. You said that it's the highest show that we've reviewed all year. That's a 9 right now. And I couldn't agree more. I think that with yeah, Succession, it was an 8.9, and then Fiona and Cake, I think, had a 9 also. Point 0.1 at the time, but it slipped, and uh, yeah, again, um, I think it's ranked number 11th, but all the shows above it, we haven't reviewed. For instance, they included documentaries like oh, Planet Earth. Yeah, Planet Earth 3, mm -hmm. obviously. But here, I think that this is a show that honestly is animated like Studio Ghibli, uh, specifically Princess Mononoke, yeah. because the creatures uh, in this show with Princess Mononoke are almost, they're almost identical. If you remember in the Culprits podcast, I think I brought up Fantasia to start yeah. that one off because it was like the 83rd anniversary. But that's what this reminded me of, too, because of the artwork style, the craziness, love, death and robots like the people who worked on that. Um, one of the shorts also worked on this. Not surprised. Yeah, not I think surprised. that this is up there with Primal and The Last Airbender when you're talking about just like the facial expressions, the movements, the backgrounds, we're not everything. Gonna, we're not going to jump into too much production stuff, but I will say that Joe Bennett and Charles Huettner, the two creators of this, uh, originally pitched it sort of like Primal, where no one would speak. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, people speak in this show. Which you can like see you have, in the yeah. first episode, because mm -hmm. I, I recognize that in the first episode, there's minimal dialogue. Now, when you watch the rest of the 11 episodes, you see that character speak a lot more than they do in that first episode. But well, Adult that Swim now, in 2016, I think, made uh, these people make them a little short. And that's what they did. But they also made sort of a pilot episode for it. So they had Adult the pilot Swim, in the just, bank. It always does that, whether it be Koala Man or I think something similar happened with Primal. The it's, difference is this. Usually shows are on a rush to get made. Yeah. This thing took 80 weeks of production. I, I know weeks. I just said that we weren't going to concentrate <laughs> on the production, but it took two years where they were able to do rewrites and just mess with it. And it kind of just was in the background, like Titmouse and uh, the, the Green what are the Green Street Pictures. Those two production companies had extreme patience with these guys. So and I, I, I don't know what that was about, but it's clearly a success on their front. And now people are expecting, because it's a success, for the show to get canceled. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 like, there's no one who's even really that famous, it seemed like, from the voices that we had. Well, so it, it, it goes to say that like the last thing you want to talk about is the cast. But it does have Elias Shawkat from Search Party, Arrested Development, The Old Man. It has uh, Sunita M Manny from Mr. Robot, No Activity, Ultra City Smiths. Uh, Wunmi Masaku playing Ozzy, uh, Loki, uh, and also Lovecraft Country. Like, they have the cast there. It's just that, yeah, it's not the central focus of the show. Getting back to what my original question was, though, what did you think of the cliffhanger? What did you think of the ending of the show? Did you expect it? It's a who's who of who's the most evil with the cliffhanger because you have Chris, who has not done a redeemable thing the whole entire episode. Perhaps the most humanity she had was not killing Ozzy. She's by far the biggest villain for the series. But then you have the hooded... Wait. No, 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 no. Hollow is the clear, clearly the biggest villain of the whole series. Unless you're about to argue that Hollow actually had like some sort of conscience because in that like came and corrupted him. No, I'm saying that when it comes to human characters, Chris was Sorry, did you say human characters originally? No, but, I, but that's why you're I was redefining talking it about. Now. Yes, yes, Chris is the most evil human character of the series. But then we get the hooded figures, three of them. And I don't know if they're going to kill Chris, if they're going to end up saving her. Or I don't really know what they they're seem going to be, be religious. And yes. I think they were like the last animated thing of the show. But but yeah, it's left up to debate. If they do get a second season, they said that they were going to expand to different planets. Huh. And the fact that they left Chris alive also like, it, it, I don't know. It, she definitely got her comeuppance. 
But like, I was 100% expecting her to be dead. I wanted her to be dead. I think uh, every single person who saw Chris, especially her her transformation into just becoming more and more evil, wanted her dead by the end of the I don't series. know if she became more and more evil. I think she was pretty constant the whole time. It's just that we learned more about her as the show went on. We never got a backlash with her, though. Um, which Which group did you like the most? Because I'll give away, one of my cons is just the scavengers in Scavenger Rain. Because they didn't show up in the first few episodes. And then when they did, there's several questions about where their allegiance lies and how, uh, like, their personalities go. And, like, Chris, I don't know. She struck me as probably the most consistent of the three of them. She had one plan. She just wanted to get off that planet with as much supplies as possible and bring it to her colony. And she didn't give a crap about who went with her. I think they show up in episode eight, right? I yeah. thought that that was very late to introduce them. I agree with you on that. Also, I didn't find any of their characters, whether it came to Barry or even Terrence, uh, to be that. I didn't. I didn't care about them. Selfishly, at all. I don't think that Barry should have survived. Like he was super whiny. Uh, he didn't seem very good at what he wanted. He like the first thing he did when he got off the spaceship was he was like running to start touching the plants, and yeah. all the plants are deadly. So. I mean, I, I think he should have died a lot earlier. The writers, I feel like, needed someone to try and uh, get kind of the escape ship or to, to get to the escape ship so that all the other crew members, such as Ozzy or Ursula and all those people, to not have an option to leave. So I guess that they just decided to introduce these three characters. I think there would have been a better way to have done that. Yeah, but I mean, I liked how they were introduced, though, because they were they were on the moon that was close to the planet. Everybody from the, the Demeter homeworld had kind of given up on them, but they just so happened to hear Ozzy's, like, the lost version. Do you remember in yes. Lost when there was that French lady who just kept on putting out the radio signal? Yes. Ozzy did something similar. Hey, I need help. They come down there and they're like, we'll bring you off the planet, but we're not going to wake up any of your friends. Or actually, they don't tell her that. They're like, uh, come on, we'll go to the Demeter together and then we'll just... Uh, act copacetic but they were clearly lying yes that was part of the reason why i was kind of upset with their characters then terrence dies so quickly and yeah the episode that he's introduced was it that episode yeah i think it was the same i episode. thought it was the next episode no it was the next episode was because it? the first episode they were introduced in um after obviously just being on the moon was uh was when their ship was destroyed by the uh by hollow that's right right yeah. and that's how it ended i think but um, which of the deaths out of all of the people, Levi's death, uh, Charlie's death, Sam's death, Terrence's death, uh, impacted you the most? Sam's death, probably, because we it, it was the longest death, I think, that we had had because he was introduced in the first episode and killed at the very end of episode 10. But It was also, a long time coming, they, though. Yeah, because they teased it at the very end of episode 6. I thought that was when he originally died, and then it seems like he got better, and then right as he was able to get where they were trying to go the whole season, he ended up just perishing. Well, yeah. I mean, he kept on getting attacked throughout and hurt throughout, right? He yes. Was, he was uh, you know, almost eaten by that creature that was eating the eggs. Yes. Um, and that he starts, weird beetle looking thing. Starts to lie to Ursula. Starts to almost kind of have his mind manipulated. That was after the bean. That was after he got the bean deposited into right. him. But that was after also when he was um, uh, turned into a zombie. Yes. Yeah. Right. So like there were so many different points, but the time when Sam started saying, hey, I feel great. And then he started doing all the exercises outside. That was when I was like, oh, he's surely going to die now. Because up until then, it was like whenever you see a character suffering, they usually can only pull off that dramatic twist if they get better. Yeah. Once it's the opposite, it's like, OK, well, clearly then they're destined to there's only one way they can go and it's not good i did like his uh the the song behind it though and being able to see what he's doing around that lake area that that segment i think that happens in episode was it eight or nine where it's showing himself getting better and he's just kind of walking around I yeah but he's not really getting better that's kind of more the spider in his heart getting stronger right and, and working more on him he he truly is spider-man but in just another sense um it, it was oddly satisfying too when he pulled it out of his body yep. to die but we're not sure if he's 100 percent dead right i think he's dead i mean it seemed like it was pretty final and if they were to bring him back we didn't it would see take the away flower all the impact. a lot of people were bringing up the fact that like you need the flower to pop out of your body once you're dead i have a theory that the reason that this planet is the way it is is because like ursula in the first episode we see her get infected with that fungus stuff but it doesn't kill her even though originally it looks almost like invincible mm -hmm. where it was so horrific 
that death scene for her when she just like yes. exploded. Um, yeah, it, I think they're all infected with whatever those spores are inside of them. And that's what causes the flower to bloom at the end, kind of like with The Walking Dead, where they all have the zombie virus, but unless you get bitten or scratched or something like that, you don't necessarily succumb to that injury. I didn't think about that, but yeah. So that is my best guess for that. That also goes along with the fact that these people were influenced by a lot of like zombie type movies, like 28 Days Later. Um, speaking of zombies, though, out of the scary creatures that you saw, there was this the stingy thing that had the zombie goo and then like it turned right. into a clone. There was those fu fuzzy stun balls that got Ozzy that uh, that uh, and then there In was also three, Hollow, yeah. obviously, and then um, the jelly bean uh scorpion um monster spider thing out of all those which was which was the scariest out of the year. ones that you mentioned i mm -hmm. would say uh probably hollow but actually the troll-like creature that's introduced at the beginning of episode six if you remember correctly they were in those pods and then that whole group um one of them gets infected and then all the whole other group gets infected and that's all just that. the stingy zombie group. yeah yeah that's all you're talking about is the yes, stingy zombie group, it was yeah. it was so troll-like it, it, it was the creepiest thing and that's how they started it and so yeah that 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 to me that was my third pro is that exact opening and then the other moment visually that got me was in the last episode i think when they showed the evolution of the planet and it turns into an apple visualizer yep yep that was pretty impressive as well <laughs> um and so you're saying that hollow was scarier than yeah actually how would you like to refer to hollow because he's got a lot of names on the internet there's telekinesis space panda there's <laughs> mind flayer chungus there's bad oppa um there's platypus majin boo out let's go three. let's go with bad opera Four. i like that one the most oh i just bad made that opera. one up Wait, that was what? out of all of them that was just a made, <laughs> a made up one but yeah he reminded me first of a koala more so than anything else and i didn't see anybody else talking about how he looked like how did he remind you of a koala I, I mean he just looks like the way he moves his hands you know like he climbs up things and and he also looked like he had a smooth brain but clearly this thing is smart it not only can uh, control your, like, it te telekinetically, like, lift you and stuff, but it can also, like, completely change your mindset and psychologically change you, it too. It made me sad because uh, I actually, came in was my favorite character out of all of them. And it seemed Kamen like was your favorite? Yes, yes, because he's a villain that you can understand. And those are always the best villains. What percent of villain do you think he is and what percent victim do you think he is? Because it is his fault that they're yes. there we saw that in a backflash in episode five i think and he does it all he like reroutes them in the spaceship which ends up causing uh them to crash it, it like he does that all to save his job but also to save his his love life his girlfriend but right? he wasn't even able to save fiona he wasn't able to save anything he yeah. reminds me in that way of the professor from fiona and cake because he's always visualizing what could have been had he not uh just screwed up like i feel did. like at the end it was kind of uh deus ex machina when levi comes back to life after Cayman and hollow had killed him and then he is able to blast hollow back into his like little panda form and then the Cayman and him are splintered off. Well, it was strange how they just let that thing leave. Yeah. Well, no, because I think the things, once it was splintered off, they were no longer parasitic together. No, I understand. Like they corrupted but each other. Why? But that thing had done so much damage. It started off just being that small anyways. Why would they not kill just an evil creature like that was one of my questions. I don't know if they wanted to bother trying to kill that thing after it, it had done what it had done. I, I'd be more curious as to why they let uh came in back into like why they didn't put him into cuffs or something yeah like he was he, he, even at the end he found that little green monster that feeds the koala or the hollow and he took it and he brought it back to hollow right so then who was your favorite character uh probably between or ursula probably ursula and she was the biggest MacGuffin because i kept waiting halfway through the series for her to like explode into fungus i thought that that was, i thought it was definitely still in her and like i i was just i could not believe that she had gotten away with it because when they originally showed that i thought it was a dream sequence where she really didn't survive so yeah there was that um and then my other con though about bad oppa was that uh he seemed super op at points like by the i think eighth ninth tenth episode when he's destroying the scavenger ship yeah he seems right. like he can do anything by the time we see him at the end, maybe he's just hungry because Cayman hasn't been bringing him as much food anymore. Maybe he just got super overweight, so he's unable to, like, take on people. But he stops using the telekinesis. 
he stops using the mental abilities that he has to freeze his prey. And instead, he kind of just lets them stab him sometimes. If he was as powerful as you're saying he was, probably that chase scene between him and Ozzy, he would end up winning within like five seconds in that finale. People were also wondering why he didn't just fly everywhere. Like you saw him climbing and he literally has the power to lift things into the air and and stop people from falling to their deaths. He was able to do that before he was super strong. So why can't he just fly himself? He can also crash through metal. You mean blaster? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's super strong as well. What were your three pros? My three pros. Okay, so I already said the animation. Even when it comes to something like the intro, it's so simplistic, beautiful, and sad with the string song in the background, and it's only twenty seconds. The music was all one guy. I'm pretty sure. Wow. And also, they were like really intent on doing ASMR type sounds. So, uh, yeah. You call me, yeah, for an environmental effect. I definitely get that. Came in being the villain. And this show does not care about keeping you on your toes. One scene, it will make you laugh. And others, it will make you squirm. Then scared and make you sad. I didn't see too much comedy in it. In fact, I was giving the show credit because it didn't feel at all like an adult comedy. Most of the cartoon shows that we get that are adult themed have to rely on being able to just say fuck in a funny way. This was able to swear and able to get through, I think, most of the episodes without having a laugh moment. Well, it, yeah, it's not a comedy show, but there were still moments, like we mentioned Few earlier. Few and far between. Yeah, but even when it had those. And then also the show got a lot done. Pacing for each yes, episode pacing. wasn't even a problem. Uh-huh. It didn't heavily rely on cliffhangers or one cool scene to make the episode good. This thing, it seemed like every single time you were about to watch an episode, you knew you were going to probably get something. And it never felt like it was lingering on one single character group too much. Like, I think that dividing it between three made it not complicated. Uh, enough to confuse the viewer but at the same time it didn't ever like overuse its welcome mm-hmm. um, they also incorporated the backflashes which some of them were a little forgettable but they did it sparingly enough where it wasn't excessive I it, the passive aggression that the uh, that hollow was able to put into um, Fiona's character which was, was crazy um, and then you also had Ursula and Chris both didn't get flashbacks that I found interesting right mm-hmm. Ursula you would think would have gotten one right? yeah she- maybe she didn't. She didn't? Okay. I, I don't think I, I wasn't so. sure. Uh, the journeys they embarked on were repetitive. Every single episode, they had uh, the same, like, antagonist is going to be introduced or a scary monster is going to be introduced. And by the end, they're either going to get away with it or part two is going to come up next. Mm-hmm. But I didn't care. Like, that's what <laughs> that's what good pacing will do for you is even if it's predictable that some people will survive, they killed off enough people where it wasn't 100 percent predictable and uh, they didn't over dramatize the death. So who had, had the best flashback? Had Ursula, oh, OK, uh, the best flashback, I would say, would be during Cayman's explanation when we found out why the ship crashed. And between Cayman and Sam, that relationship was actually pretty interesting and in how they'll never be able to resolve that if mm-hmm. Sam truly is dead. Um, and then the focused, uh, balanced way, it didn't feel like part of the season was more weighted than the other. In fact, I think it's episode six, the one that you were talking about, that opening, that did such a great job introducing a new villain without actually having to show us the main characters while doing so. Uh, that's the highest rated one. I think it has a 9.3 right now. Um, and then your other thing was art, right? Yes. Yes, that falls. I, I think we have almost the same pros because my first one is pacing just like your second one was my first one or my second one is creativity which i think is the same as art going in this is a quote from them we were thinking as much as we could about actual ecology biology and what the purpose of each creature was to that ecosystem so i've seen planet three recently (laughs) and if you look at the second episode there and they're going down to those hydrothermal vents and they're looking at the ocean and the octopus and like all the different sea creatures that you'll never see in real life but like some of them are transparent and and like completely uh, like the cameras they're using for them to just to show them mm-hmm. is pretty impressive. But they look exactly like the type of creatures that are being described here or like made here. Um, and, and then uh, it's nice to also think that not every one of them was there to kill uh, humans. Like yes. a, a bunch of them are. But Sam was able to kill that giant hippo thing at the beginning for its like utility. There was also those fish the, like the Gura fish that went up and like started eating away the bad scabs mm-hmm. that Ozzy had. So yeah, the, like it's a give and take. And also the the characters that have the three, I don't know how to describe them. They were green and it was almost like a slinky and that for its face, it had three circles. The ones that fed the koalas. That was, the, that was the most 
Princess Minona, okay. That oh, I got okay. It. I think that there's like characters almost uh, exactly like them in the movie. Do you want to move on to our cons? Well, no, because the oh, you still have your pros. Well, no, 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 the creativity. I just want to say the themes that are there. Even the Demeter is, is from mythology. It's uh, the ancient Greek goddess of uh, harvest, agriculture, presiding over crops, grains, foods, and fertility of the earth. And <laughs> how does that not describe this planet with how? fertile it is i thought it was just a cool name for the ship i didn't yeah. know it had that background meaning to yeah. it yeah and then there's also themes of man versus nature man versus machine man versus oh, self yeah like almost everything it, when levi came back to life like i like the iron giant moment everybody loved that he came back or, or she came back right yeah but um it was like impossible there's no way that like the, all the creatures came together to make levi again and it seems like that world wasn't like, it wasn't one mind for that whole world. So it, it was, it struck me as odd. I thought that there was maybe just, it was a different Levi machine. But then, yeah, when you came to learn about it more and more, and it not was only that, to be it the can actual Levi. It can reproduce now. It's like biosynthetic. So that was the third thing I wanted to point out when we were talking about the cliffhanger. Because we already talked about Chris, the hooded figures. Which one is going to be more evil? I feel like plant Levi is going to be hollow, halo, whatever it is, on steroids. I think that that is going to be the epitome of evil evil in this show definitely the big bad for the next upcoming season that's my biggest prediction hmm, that's interesting i don't see i see them as pretty innocent but that's they're, but they're, I, they're to be helpful but you have to look at the visitors you have on those ship chris is evil hooded figures i think we can kind of assume are evil plant levi i think is going to be probably the worst because we were able to see levi's violent side by the end of episode 11 where she literally squishes things and just blood is like coming from her fingers. well no the blood was from the rope she recognized the rope that Ozzy was stuck in, and that's where the oh, blood came from. Yeah, <laughs> and so then she went and she uh, destroyed uh, Hollow for her. But they, yeah. yeah, but they also know how to fight. I think that the scariest thing would be a Levi replicant like this plant Levi being evil. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I people also like the birds that were able to cook their uh, worms that they were getting with their mm -hmm. reflective plumage, the organisms, the creatures, the foliage, um, and then there were certain lines. That got me like uh, when uh, Ozzy clearly states this place, it's like a puzzle. Nothing really makes sense the way we know it. Mm -hmm. Like that was just right on the money and uh, obviously meant to be so. But um, yeah, we can transition over into the cons now. OK, so this is not an easy watch. Every episode is going to be heavy and dark. This is not Fiona and Cake. You cannot binge watch this series. All 12 episodes are usually unhappy and the good things happen, as you mentioned earlier, far and in between. Yeah, it's six hours long. It's <laughs> not bad, but it is something that I think should be a note of caution to anyone who just wants to jump into this series. Mm, OK, so you're saying instead of telling everybody to go watch it at the beginning, I should have said, but wait, <laughs> well, six hours. I'm saying yeah. that this isn't necessarily necessarily a con as much as kind of an observation for number one that's that's what i add yeah um my thing again was the scavengers and the way that they were like so sanguine um almost zen about the fact that their uh their their ship had been destroyed but at the same time seemed very ruthless and aggressive about other tiny things like that microphone that he had yeah. like why get so angry about that but not angry about your ship being destroyed and then also the, my second con is more of a selfish con but it's like why did sam why was he the bronze of like all the bad stuff happening to him. <laughs> again he was jabbed by the egg bug the clone tree the seed monster like he could not catch a break and he was supposed to be like the captain of the crew ozzy kind of had it easy except when she met the scavenger crew but. yeah i mean she was tied up with her hands behind her back and her feet That's but up that until that point it was like she was able to coast pretty well along without meeting any of the bad monsters i did have as my second con the characters barry chris any to a lesser extent because terrence i felt with his death it did serve at least some type of stakes there but i didn't venus fly trap sort of death yes yeah. i didn't enjoy watching them and it just felt like it was lazy writing they needed someone to be really bad so they put Chris in that uh, thing. And then to make like the biggest character grow the most, they decided to make Barry have this moment where he's like, no, I'm going to help save the people. Just not, I think, executed correctly. I do feel like you're ignoring Charlie's death, though. Charlie was the guy who just showed up in like episode four and he found Cayman and he was being attacked by like, yes. everything. No, yeah, and he yeah, was yeah, all yeah. innocent. And everybody was like, that would be me. And it's in this planet, I don't think I would have survived 30 minutes. And, so. the, and the monsters that he sees when he gets out of the sleep chamber, uh, the two, I guess they were almost like, dogs those were pretty scary creatures yeah barely well. made it out of that and then he got that mosquito that like sucked out a 
big portion of his scalp and then uh, to have the hollow monster then twist his neck all the way around because it was so selfish that it didn't want Cayman to have friends yep. or whatever its reasoning was. What were some of the other comparisons you had? Uh, so I have Blast of Us, wall -E, Interstellar, and then RimWorld. Surprisingly, I've never played RimWorld, but it also deals with a uh, spacecraft that has crashed onto a weird uh, land, right? Um, spacecraft being like you know, a bunch of rich people who like either decide to go in or yeah you can crash land there and then you can take a spaceship off the planet yeah i totally see the comparison the thing i've noticed about uh survival stories uh in tv shows or movies live action ones is that they tend to stumble so you have annihilation the walking dead the 100 lost in space terra nova they usually start really really strong and then the shock and awe wears off and the story is limited by the budget right with animated shows you tend to get a lot uh, there's a better chance that they'll succeed over time. Like the animation in The Wall for Solar Opposites. Like, <laughs> I know that that doesn't seem like it would be a survival show, but that totally is it the is, reason why people yeah. like to, to tune into that. Fiona and Cake, like uh, you were talking about earlier, Attack on Titan, which just ended recently, um, and Love, Death, and Robots. And I don't think that they wanted to mention Primal too much because they didn't want to draw the complete comparison, but yeah. that is a lot of what this show does, especially Absolutely, with the nature yeah. aspect. Um, and uh, then video games, Sable, Risk of Rain, documentaries, anything that has to do with nature. And in real life, let's talk about what they were actually influenced by from the creators themselves. They've said this. There's the YouTube channel Primitive Technology, the one where the guy goes around right. with play stuff no, and he makes doing. different huts and he cooks things and he just does it all with his hands. I think he showed up just for YouTube shorts. Rewind one year. Yeah, yeah. the guy's awesome. <laughs> um, and then you have the style, uh, Mobius style 2D animation. Um, like I said before, Jurassic Park, Manchester by the Sea, 28 Days Later, Solaris, Last of the Mohicans. Um, and then the comic, The Worlds of Aldebaran. I'm sure that like you could just keep on going with that list of things that this mm. is like but isn't exactly and that's what makes it unique i think um, aliens as well aliens has to have some type of influence on this show i feel like sure yeah, yeah i absolutely in fact i i remember them saying something about that in the interview but i think what they said to that was that they were concentrating less on the sci-fi and trying to make it more about again the, the nature stuff yeah because with neil degrasse tyson giving this a thumb no 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 no, no that, that, was, all that made up. was i was made up yeah. oh i was gonna okay that was because, because of the golden bachelor i remember I with yeah. interstellar he had such a problem with that i think he also had a problem with gravity and i was going to give this show props for well, give it props for this titmouse is the one who made it the titmouse the people who do big mouth and, venture bros, uh, and star think, trek yeah. venture bros and uh yeah all those type of like kind of shows that you wouldn't think care that much about the animation <laughs> style like i don't think venture bros has ever really concentrated on trying to make something visually amazing nothing, besides an explosion nothing like this nothing where it's is like every frame you can pause it and just kind of admire it for uh, how good it is I, am i the only one who thinks that like uh, levi returning was sort of like a gandalf moment for him like he was not the same levi who died he's gandalf the she uh, she i keep on saying he <laughs> uh yeah she is like gandalf or uh levi the green or something like that i, I just i feel I feel like she's evil underneath or what you she's said that. thinking yeah, yeah, yeah. evil. I know I've already said it, but I'm saying even her when she returned, like when she actually ended up saving Ozzy, I was surprised, even though I don't think the show wanted me to be. Yeah, I think the show was setting that up all along. Um, they did. One of Ozzy's decisions did confuse me. Like, I understand how eventually she wanted to wake everybody up. Yeah. Right. And, and that was the right thing to do. But her original plan to wake everyone oh, up. Oh, sorry. Passengers. Seemed... Passengers. Because that's, that's yes, of course. the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah go, go and cryo tubes in general, they show them in, in passengers. They seem pretty standard in sci-fi and like the way that they're depicted. Yeah. But they don't exist. And so it's funny <laughs> how like every across all sci-fi, however you want to do it in any they, they always make cryo tubes look the same. Mm -hmm. That's crazy because when it, like when it actually does get invented one day, it would just be funny <laughs> if it was nothing like that. Um, anyway, so yeah, Ozzy's original plan though was that she was going to get to that ship, the Demeter, and then wake everybody up immediately. Yes. Which uh, it feels like, first of all, they don't have like a, a food supply. That, that would be a big, like right now they're safe in the cryo yeah, tubes. There was true. nothing necessarily threatening them. If they had woken certain people up, those people who could help in this situation, they, get them off planet, that would be one thing. But it seemed like from the get go, she just wanted to go there, get her girlfriend out of the cryo tube. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and, and the same with everybody else. And, and I was just confused by that. I didn't see that as very helpful. Yeah. Uh, my last con was just 
Cayman, who again was my favorite character, yeah. takes a back seat from episode six to ten. He oh, I is not like that. in the series. You I like, like that because I, I liked his character, so not seeing him for the longest time, I was like, oh come on. I felt like the show was found itself and trusted its own uh, writing enough where it was like we've developed this character. If we keep him around and just have him walking around, it's going to get boring. You know, and so what they did was they said, let's put them on the back burner. Let's introduce these new guys. Let's get as much story as we can get get in there and then introduce them all at once, because it really was in the end, the bad guys versus the bad guys. You got the scavengers getting to the Demeter first and then you got the uh, hollow getting there is second and then they start fighting. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what you get. Again, I think Barry didn't really need a reason to survive if we could have traded his life for <laughs> Sam. Um, I think I think I wouldn't be the only one who was going for that. But thanks for listening. Do we have anything else? We no, want to say? A, what is your oh, rating? Yeah, my rating. I, I'm going to give it a nine out of ten. I will give the show as a whole an eight out of ten. I probably would have given it a nine out of ten if I didn't have to binge the series. And that was that was kind of hard. And like, like I said, about, that was one of my cons. It's a chunky if you're watching it like that. I think the three episodes at once, which is what they did each week, probably was great for fans. Yep. Like it, it, it left them with just enough to be excited for the next week and stuff. Uh, yeah. So thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. Bye. Bye. Bye.